My name is Bill, and I run a program called Animation Nation here at Westerly Library. In this program, we make stop-motion movies using Lego, a phone, and not much else. And today I'm going to show you how to do the same. Part 1. What do you need? So, what do you need to create your own Lego stop-motion movies, or brick films as they're also called? There's an old Hollywood saying, lights, camera, action. Your movie won't look very good if it is not well lit. These zombies dancing in the dark may be cute, but they would be a lot cuter if you could see them well. Try to film in a brightly lit room, and several light sources are almost always better than one. It would be great to have overhead light, front light, which is called the key light, and some side light or fill light. But if you only have one light source, that is perfectly fine. Next, you will need something to take pictures with. This can be a cell phone or a digital camera. We used both when we were making our movies. The important thing is that the picture should be in a common digital format, like JPEG or PNG, so it can be easily downloaded into a software program. What else do we need? Why Lego, of course. You will need something to perform the action in your film. Here you can see some of the monster figures we have used in the past. Since it is almost Halloween, our ghoulish friends here have volunteered to take part in our fiendish experiment. <laughs> you will also need a location for the action to take place in. You can build your own set out of Lego, use a pre-made backdrop like this, or print a picture you like and paste it to cardboard. It is also very helpful to have a Lego plate that your characters can stand on. It will make posing them and shooting complex action much, much easier. Part 2. The Basics How to Animate The basic principle of animation is to take multiple still images that are all slightly different and then view them quickly. This will give the illusion that the object is moving on its own. So your Lego minifigures will walk, jump, and run, as well as dance, fight, and perform amazing feats. We have to make our movies exciting after all. Taking pictures. Pose your characters and take a picture. Then have them move slightly and take another picture. Great. Now do that a few hundred more times. Yes, this can become a little tedious, but the results will be worth it. The more pictures you take, the better. Let's take a few now. Great, and now let's see how it looks speeded up. Look out! That ghost is coming right toward you! Is that werewolf really playing the drums? Steady cam. Okay, this is very important. Keep the camera steady. Okay, uh, if you're taking multiple shots from all different angles and then running them together at high speed, it uh, can make people feel a little queasy and it's not fun for them to look at. So you don't want to do that. If your camera comes with a tripod, that's great. You can use that. Or if you're using a phone, you can create a little cradle like this that the iPhone, out of Legos, that the iPhone could just sit in and then you can keep it nice and steady for every shot. If I can get it to work. <laughs> there we go. Staging your shot. Before you start shooting away, think about the scene you are filming and how it will fit into your movie. There are three basic shots that can help you tell your story. A long shot is a great way to start a scene because it shows the setting and the characters. Here we see a witch and the human fly meeting to discuss some evil plan. A mid shot will work great for two characters having a, a conversation or other interaction. Uh-oh, it looks like our two villains disagree about something. A close-up can highlight something important to the audience. Say, it looks like Dr. Fluffenstein has had enough. 
Look out! That cat is about to pounce! <laughs> camera angles. Different camera angles can make the audience feel different things. A low angle shot will make the character look strong and powerful, while a high angle shot does the opposite, making them look small and weak. A point of view shot will show what the character is looking at. Part 3. Putting it all together. Computer, phone, or tablet. After you've taken all of your pictures, it is movie making time. If you have access to a computer, great. But you can even edit your movie on a phone or tablet. And remember, the library has iPads to lend out, but you will need an adult to check one out for you. There is an app called Stop Motion Studio that works with all kinds of mobile devices. It is designed for making just these kind of movies. Software. There are many programs that we use to make our movies, and they are all absolutely free. I use GIMP if I need to edit any of the pictures I have taken. I use Audacity to record and edit sound for the films. And there are a bunch of programs that can be used to edit videos iMovie is a great choice if you've been using an iPhone or an iPad. Shotcut is fantastic, but a bit more complicated. So I recommend trying it after you've become an experienced filmmaker. For this demonstration, I will be using Windows Movie Maker. It is an older program, but you can still find it online. I like using it because it is very simple and easy to learn. Okay, let's make our first video clip. First, open Windows Movie Maker. Now, click Add Videos and Photos. All right, and open up a folder with the pictures you want to use. Add as many pictures as you want. Click Open. All right. Now if you hit play, you're going to see it takes a long time for something to happen. That's because the default setting is 7 seconds per image, which is just way too slow for stop motion animation. So let's pause this. And to fix this, we're going to select all, so all our pictures are selected. Then go to under video tools, hit edit. And this section over here is duration. You can see it's set to seven seconds. Let's change it to one and see what happens. All right. Now that's better, but it's still not perfect. So to tweak it, we go back to home, select all. Go back to edit. Now let's try point three. Just type it in. Click anywhere on the screen. And now hit play. That's more like it. That's starting to look like real stop motion animation. Now you can continue to tweak it and make it go faster or slower depending on what is going on in your scene. All right, once you have your pictures at a speed you like, be sure to save your project. When your movie is ready for the world to see, click File, go to Save Movie. I always choose for High Definition Display. Okay, now you can choose where you want to save your movie. I'm going to save it in my Animation Nation 2020 folder. And I'm going to name it Spider Lady. All right. And then you can see down here it's going to save it as an MPEG 4. MPEG is a common video format. So we hit save. And we wait while it's saving. All right. 
Now a screen pops up and it says you can play your video file now or open the folder that it's in. So I'm going to open the folder. Bring it over here so you can see it. And there's our movie. And that is how you do it. All you need are a few simple tools, some Legos, and, or other items that are just lying around the house, and a fun idea for your movie. The only limit is your imagination, so there are no limits. Anything you can imagine, you can bring to life through stop motion animation. And this lesson is only scratching the surface. You can add sound, animations, and special effects. All things I'll show you how to do in our next Animation Nation how-to video. Coming soon to a YouTube channel near you.